in something along the lines of three days. I'm supposed to be leaving on this long trip. And I will. In the run up to it, I've been packing a kitchen, which is to say an RV fridge, a single burner, a large battery to power those things, a sink, a box of pots, pans, dishes, utensils, a crate of food. And it's mostly that food that I've been focused on. What ought one eat? What really is a healthy diet? Not just healthy from the perspective of an individual or a couple of individuals, but healthy for us all. Regenerative food, a sustainable way of eating. All those good modern buzzwords. So I've been down in the weeds. I've been making out shopping lists and crafting flexible recipes. And the closer I get to a plan, a medium term viable plan for all of that, the more I try to tie it back to what I believe about this life, this society, this political moment. And I came across a video from a smart Brit, a pair of smart Brits, one interviewing the other. And for the most part, I agreed completely with what they had to say. However, one of the things that this gentleman pointed out, and if you want details of, about who I'm talking about or what videos I watched, you can always go over to vertaircom slash spill and read all about it. In the meantime, let me just tell you what he said. What he said was all these ideas about grass-fed beef organic, free-range chickens. He said, we, collectively, the world, cannot feed ourselves that way. There is no way. We already take up so much of what used to be 
wild land with producing food. This land that I'm standing on right now, walking on right now, it's wrecked because of cattle ranching mainly. And this is the unsustainable, non-regenerative form of cattle ranching. If the cows that walk this land were to have lush, healthy grass to eat, it would take even more of the energy and resources of this land. And the real problem is the fact that there are now eight billion people to feed. There's some question about whether we could farm enough seaweed to feed them all. There's a serious question about whether we could grow enough meat in a lab to feed them all, much less to feed them all on sustainable, healthy forms of food. So in the end, I come back. You might even say I am forced to come back to the fact that we made a certain choice, a set of choices. 10, 12,000 years ago, 8,000 years ago, depending on where in the world. And these choices were to stop moving, stop hunting, stop gathering, become agriculturalists, pastoralists to a lesser extent but sedentary. Eventually this leads us to become consumers. It seemed like the right choice at the time to settle down, to build granaries, and to fill them. And when there was millions of people on the planet, instead of billions of people on the planet. It seemed at first like this was a brilliant idea, a huge innovation, a really good thing. But now we're at the other end of that decision. And the chickens, whether factory farmed, or free range, pastured, are coming home to roost. I come back around once more to the fact that the choices we made are now in relative terms irrevocable. We got to our first billion and our second and our seventh and our eighth and that was all seen as progress. That was all seen as great success. And now we are very much the victims of that success. In a way it doesn't matter if we're talking about food or energy or housing and shelter there are too many of us I'm not advocating for a calling of the herd 
I'm simply noticing that simple fact. We can't innovate our way out of this dead end. And that's true at the level of the planet. And it's true at the level of this one country. I don't have a program for you today, cadets. I don't have a solution to the problem that is humanity and the choices that we have, as humans have made. I don't believe there is such a solution. I have a pretty good handle now on what foods are the most healthy for me personally. But I think there might be an inversely proportional relationship between those answers and the question of what is a healthy diet for all of us, for the planet? How then ought we live? I offer you no answers to that question because I don't believe there are answers. You could certainly accuse me as a result of fatalism, of giving in to the desire to just tuck my head in my wing and hope it all goes away. I don't feel fatalistic. I do feel fated to fatality. I don't know what you should do. I have a hard enough time trying to figure out on an average day what I should do. Maybe there are 20 hours left to me in this existence. Maybe there are 20 years. Each passing moment is precious. And once it goes, it won't be seen again. That has to be enough. Not only in the context of my own little life, but in the universal context of us all. It's cold out this morning. Maybe in the middle of the 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? It's all about that context. It's all about the interpretation. I choose to not decide about its relative goodness or badness. I choose to walk. I choose to walk every day. I choose to bring you with me. Sometimes. <laughs>